Good morning. If, if you're watching online, we welcome you to our service for uh, Sunday, uh, September 6th, 2020, at the Hala Presbyterian Church in Scotland, North Carolina. And we are so glad that you are with us. Uh, worshiping together. So let's all worship together. Now, announcements. We do have a number of prayer concerns and announcements. Uh, my mother and stepdad uh, came off the COVID unit and are now counted as recovered. Uh, they, they, they tested positive. They did not get sick. And now they're back with the regular crowd. Uh, so the COVID remains a, a, a concern in any nursing home, um, and so we just want to keep the nursing home folks in our prayers. Mom and Phil are doing well. Becky uh, it continues to struggle with uh, uh, some issues regarding her infection and uh, uh, just trying to get all of that squared away. She had to go back to Chapel Hill last week. Uh, so we really want to keep Becky in our prayers. It's a very difficult situation for her, and we want to just continue to speak and, and, and believe and just have that vision of healing, that vision of healing. Um, I'm going to be having an MRI on my kidney um, um, on Wednesday. And I'll be getting some direction from the doctor about what we're going to do uh, treatment-wise uh, after after we get that information. So we got we're just going to wait and see what gets uh, said and done there. Um, Miriam is doing okay, Albert. Doing real well this week. Good week. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Very good. We're keeping her in our prayers right along. Um, Terry uh, is uh, just getting back there. You know, she, she her her she has the long term version of uh, of COVID that takes uh, the longer time to get over. Uh, and but uh, and she also had a uh, radical mastectomy, so she's having just some issues there that need to be. Uh, dealt with, but she's coming along. She is coming right along. Um, I don't know if I will be here on Tuesday or not, uh, because I have some medical stuff I got to do with Kathy on Tuesday. So uh, <laughs> if it's not one thing, if it's not one thing, what is it going to be? It will be so. But you got to love it. you just got to love it step by step, bit by bit. Any other uh, prayer concerns or announcements? Come to our call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Praise the Lord as long as you live. And now let's pray together using the unison prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Let's pray together. Just God, you are even handed in your justice and in the day of judgment will not play favorites. We confess that we are not so fair in our dealings. We are often unduly impressed by the powerful and clever and excuse in them what we would condemn in the powerless and ignorant. Forgive our superficiality and neglect of people needing advocacy and friendship through the friend of sinners, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's pray silently. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. 
God has chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith. We will inherit the kingdom of Christ as a promise to those who love him. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Uh, a word of uh, support for these two empty offering plates on the uh, front table. Uh, please remember, dear friends, to support your church to the greatest extent you are able in this time uh, of tremendous challenge. Um, let's go on now to a uh, uh, time of, of prayer and let us bow our heads and speak with the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, with all that is going on, with all the challenges and all the fears and all the worries and all the complications and difficulties that this world may throw at us, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you, because we're here now, in this moment. And Lord God, I ask you that you would help us each to open our hearts and our minds to the spirit of victory and triumph that comes from a relationship with you. And so, Lord God, open our hearts and help our faith to grow. Let us be just a little bit more faithful day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Let us grow in faith and in commitment to you. And so, Lord God, we lift up these prayers. We pray for our nation, so bitterly divided and on the brink of failure. Lord God, that healing would occur and we would quit fostering division and fighting with one another over this or that, but that we would draw together and remain one nation that we would understand that people are people and we're all the same and we would be able to just reach out to one another and join together and seek the blessings that you have for us all. Lord God, uh, we, we pray as we always do a, a, a prayer of, of gratitude and thanksgiving for all our law enforcement officers, wherever they are. Lord God, that, that we just thank you for people who are willing to, to serve the order of civil society. And we ask you, Lord God, to bless and keep and watch over each and every one of them wherever they are working. Lord, we lift up those who are calling for social justice, especially, Lord God, for those who are doing it in, uh, in, in an orderly and nonviolent fashion. And Heavenly Father, for the hotheads on, on both sides of the divide, for those who feel they need to smite one another, Lord, help them to learn the lessons of peace and wholeness. And so we ask that the peace of God would be upon this nation, upon its leaders, upon all the politicians, Heavenly Father, we pray for all of our elderly. We pray especially for those who reside in nursing homes. And we ask you, Lord God, that you would bless those who are in nursing homes, wherever they are. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the presence of our elders in our lives. 
We thank you for the wisdom, the perspective, the memories, the just their love and their presence and just their being with us, Lord God. Help us to be grateful for every moment we have with each of them. And so, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for, for Mildred and, and for the incredible perspective that she has on this world. And we thank you and we praise you for Miriam, Lord God, that you would be with her and bless her, encourage her this day. And Lord, be with Albert and strengthen and encourage him and be with Mac and Nita as they are taking care and helping with, uh, with Miriam. Lord God, we ask your blessings. And we ask your blessings upon Terry and Zell, Lord God, that you would be with and bless and keep them and, and Heavenly Father, any situations that come up, we just lift them up to you, Lord God, and we ask that your love would just fill our lives and that we would gain a sense of understanding as we look at all the mysteries and all the difficulties that we may face. Be with Terry, Lord God, for healing. Lord, we lift up Becky to you. And, and we ask your blessings upon Becky. We continue, Lord God, in the name and by the power of Jesus to speak healing for her. And we thank you and we praise you for her amazing spirit and for the way that she has continued to reach out to other people and offer encouragement and just this incredible example of the power of faith. And so, Lord God, be with Eunice and bless her. Help her, Lord God, with that knee. Help her to just, as she gets around, bless her, keep her, and her whole family we lift up in prayer. And Trudy, Lord God, we thank you that she's doing as well as she is, but Heavenly Father, she has a real problem with an ongoing cough, uh, and we just ask you, Lord God, that... That, that you would be with her and, and strengthen and bless her and encourage her as she uh, continues to really need to be in isolation um, and stay away from any exposure to COVID-19. Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessings on Trudy. Lord, we ask your blessings on all the situations that worry us all the needs of our hearts. I lift up my health situation to you, Lord God, and I, I just, I surrender it to you, Lord. It's in your hands, and I ask you for healing. I ask you for blessings. I ask you for guidance to be with the doctors as they decide what they're going to be doing. Heavenly Father, in all our situations, those we've spoken and those that remain silent within our hearts, we lift them up to you into power and by the name of Jesus. Praying as he taught us and saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> now, a word about the scriptures. Um, I am continuing to take every Wednesday a Bible study. And it, it, it can take a few hours to upload that thing to the internet, but it's put up on YouTube. And... Uh, those of you who don't have access to the internet, if you ask one of your family members who does, um, they can just see that right on this. And they, they can just go click, click, click and just show it to you. And you can sit there and watch it, right? And, and the reason I mentioned the Bible studies is they average in length about half an hour to 40 minutes. And... It's just an opportunity to go into more depth and a little slower 
on looking at the scriptures. And this, it, it, these are interesting scriptures, and there, there's a lot to be gained. And I'm trying, like, uh, when I work um, on uh, Wednesday's Bible study, we're going to be looking at this story and discussing this story from um, the book of, of Joshua. Um, because this is an amazing story. This story is, is, uh, is one that you may remember from your early days. I, I'd be real curious as to how long ago it has been since you heard this story, or if you have ever heard this story. Now, one, two, three, four, five, there are only, there's a very small handful of people here, six of us, seven of us. How many of you have heard the story at some point in your life of when Joshua stopped the sun. Dennis, you, you get that story? Did you ever see that in Sunday school? Joshua stopped the sun. Okay, so it, like I, that is exactly what I thought. We haven't seen this story, but it, it, it's an interesting text, and I'm going to read it to you today, okay? Um, and, and this is, uh, now the story of Joshua, this will be in the book of Joshua, chapter 10. Joshua, chapter 10, verse 7, and following. And it is the, the, the story of uh, a war that was fought between the tribes of Israel and the Amorites. Five kings of the Amorites who did battle against Joshua and the tribes of Israel. And um, it, it's very violent. I mean, it was just um, uh, the, 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 just, just a, a, a prodigiously violent thing. And, it, and it, it, it shows us the way things were in the Bronze Age, okay? This is a Bronze Age story. It's a very ancient story. Um, easily more than a thousand years before Jesus was born. So this story itself is 3,000 years old. Um, and I'm just going to start with verse 7 of uh, Joshua chapter 10. So Joshua went up from Gilgal and uh, all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. Mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. There shall not be a man of them to stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who slew them with a great slaughter. Now that's classic Bronze Age Hebrew right there. Slew them with a great slaughter, slash, hack, chop. You know, that's what that word is showing us, okay? And chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Horon and smote them as far as Azekah and Makedah. So smote them, slaughter, you know, it's all smite and slaughter. Uh, and as they fled before Israel while they were going down the ascent of Beth Aram, the Lord threw down great stones from a heaven upon them as far as Azekah, and they died. And there were more who died because of the hailstones than the men of Israel killed with the sword. Okay, I hope you can see a little hyperbole here. Okay. Uh, they're, they're bringing in, I mean, you know, they're making this point, okay? The enemies of the people destroyed. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the men of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still at Gibeon. And moon in the valley of Ajalon. 
And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stayed in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down the whole day. There has been no day like it before or since when the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. So there is the story of the sun standing still in the sky at the, at the command of Joshua. Now I'm going to take you to the book of James. And um, the, this is another, um, another scripture that, that, that is, is a way of understanding the power that God gives to us. The power that the Lord gives us. And this is uh, <clears throat> the very end of James. Um, James chapter 16, uh, excuse me, verse 16 of chapter 5. There's only five chapters in James. This is the epistle of James, the brother of Jesus. And it's uh, chapter 5, verse 16, where James says the following, Therefore, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man has great power in its effects. That's the key. The prayer of a righteous man has great power in its effects. Elijah was a man of like nature with ourselves, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. Now that's James talking about a, a recollection in Scripture of the time that Elijah commanded the weather. Now, so there's Joshua stopping the sun, and there's Elijah commanding the weather, and, and there was a reputation that James had, a legend outside the Bible, that James also was a spiritual rain maker, one who could call rain to the earth, and that, that's... Uh, ancient story about James. Now, see, James is only uh, about 1900 or 1950, 1970 years ago um, in, in the time of, of, uh, of Jesus. And then finally, one more reading about power. One more reading about the power of our relationship with God. Uh, I'm going to take this one from Mark's Gospel. Um, and this will be Mark 11, verse 20. Um, Gospel according to Mark, chapter 11, verse 20. And this is right after Jesus uh, at the Mount of Olives and coming down in, in his time, close to the end of his time in Jerusalem, he cursed a fig tree, and the fig tree withered. And they came by in the morning, this is verse 20, uh, as they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive your Trespasses. So there we have Jesus talking about lifting up mountains. Okay. Now we have to talk about power. Okay. All right. 
We're going to talk about power today. That's what we're going to talk about. And I brought you something. Boy, I had to think hard about what to do for this because uh, I, I, uh, I, I've been working on these scriptures. And as I said, I'm going to be, now you're going to move me, I'm going this way. Okay, you good? Okay. Um, the, um, I'm going to open this scripture again for the Bible study on Wednesday because I really want to look closely at that scripture from uh, from uh, Joshua. Okay, how do we measure power? How do you measure power on, in the physical world? Um, now, uh, with, do you do you do you work? What kind of work do you do? Uh, marketing. Hmm? Marketing. You're in marketing. Woo! Power. Woo! There you go. Now, how do you measure power in marketing? <clears throat> um, you measure power in marketing by. Um, Okay, come on now, brain. Um, market share uh, surveys, basically. Basically information, right? About who wants what, right? Like, uh, I, I can see what I go, I, I just got this beautiful uh, iPad here, right? This is an iPad Pro, right? And I can just see the algorithms cranking up as they're trying to figure out, who is this guy and what can we sell him? Right? Okay. Um, your tractor. How many tractors you got? Four. Okay. How do you measure the power? Horse power. Right? Horse power. Okay? That's the power that a horse. Now, that's the weirdest thing in the world, how they figured that out. I mean, if you really look at it, how did they come up with that? I mean, which, whose horse did they use, right? Was it a Clydesdale or one that was about to die? You know, what, how did you measure horsepower? Okay, electricity. How do we measure the power of electricity? We have amps, we have Watts, we have volts and ohms. Now, I haven't got a clue what an ohm is, right? I, 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 don't, I don't even know what an ohm is, okay? But it's a unit of measurement. All forms of, how about the energy that goes into your body from your food? How do, how do we measure that? What's the measurement? The, the energy that goes into your body by your food. Calories, right? Right? Calories. Okay, that's all just measurement for energy. Okay, now. Um, all right. Now, I, 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 I would like us this morning, see here, we'll do this right here in church. This will work just great, okay? We'll have us a little contest here, okay? Right? It'll be um, Whit and Tom and Dennis and Albert. Um, and Eunice and Nan, um, and, uh, um, and, and y'all be on one side, I'll be on the other, okay? Right? Now, we're going we're gonna to get us a great big heavy-duty eye screw, a great big lag screw, and we're going to put it in the floor up on the pulpit here. We'll get this table out of the way. We're going to put this hook inside that lag, right? And I'm going to hand you guys... I mean, the story had a lot of hyperbole, right? <laughs> Works in marketing. <laughs> it really does, right? Right? Okay. Y'all get the rope. Okay? Y'all going to get in a group down there. I'm going to bolt this thing to the floor right here. Y'all going to hold the rope. We're going to attach the rope to the come along, right? And, and we'll have us a, a contest. It'll be a tug of war. Who's going to win? <laughs> Is that, yeah, because I'll tell you one thing right now. This thing cheats. Okay? Because every crank you get on it, it locks and it will not come back. <laughs> so all I'd have to do is get you one little inch at a time and 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 and, and, and now I shouldn't speak with such confidence I should not be so confident 
Because what would probably happen is y'all be over there and y'all get yourself organized and you'd hang onto that rope and you'd be all dug in there and ready to go. And I'd be over here and I'd be, I'd go ahead and I'd say, watch this. And I'd crank on that thing and then I'd blow out my shoulder. <laughs> right? Because I'm just at the age of blowouts. <laughs> yeah. Poing! <laughs> you know, there goes the rotator cuff, you know. <laughs> and, and at which point, y'all can just, that'd be it. It would be over, right? Right? Okay. Power. Power, power, power. All right. These scriptures, I'm going back up to the pulpit now. So, uh, the scripture in Joshua. The scripture in James and the scripture in Mark are all about power. And power is probably the most misunderstood concept that we have. Because power is a commodity in a variety of forms. <clears throat> Power is bought and sold in the marketplace, basically. We, um, I mean, truly, you can buy a politician if you want to, okay? You, there's a price for a United States senator. There's a price for a congressman. There's a price for whatever. You, you can buy power. Okay? Y'all know that. That's, that is no surprise to anybody, right? Okay, that's just kind of the way of the world right now. Um, you can uh, broker influence and power, right? And we have these people who are power brokers in, in various systems and various ways. And it is that, that um, commodity aspect of power that has completely kind of twisted us around. And we live in a time where the, the, the ways we look at the world are changing. Okay, this is something we gotta understand that the, the ways we see the world are changing from the way we used to see the world. Um, and uh, let me begin with, uh, with the scripture from James. Um, and then I'm gonna work uh, back to uh, Joshua and then over to Mark. Now, James was an Essene. And there's various words that we have. Essene comes from Josephus, the historian. There is uh, also a Rechabite, a Nazarite, or a Nazorian, or a Nazarene. Uh, there is uh, a Zadokite follower of Zadok. They're, they're all through the, the scriptures of the Old Testament. There are various references to these people who were prophets and, and individuals who lived a life of total commitment to God. Okay? And it was a tradition in, in the Jewish tradition going all the way back to Adam. Uh, they called them the sons of Adam which came to be translated as son of man. Okay, so, that, so son of man identifies Jesus as belonging to this tradition, right, of prophets and, and people of God who, who were living in a close relationship or connection to God. Okay, Abraham was one. Uh, the sons of Abraham, the tradition coming down, Moses, and the servant of Moses was Joshua. Moses passed the torch to Joshua. Joshua was a man of God. He was committed completely to the Lord. And, and this Nazorian, Nazarene uh, 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 tradition of of, of absolute, unreserved, unconditional commitment to God. That tradition went right on through. 
uh, down to the time of Elijah. And Elijah, similarly, the prophet, the man of God. And the tradition went all the way down to Jesus, who we know was a Nazorian, who we know was uh, probably an Essene, or at least had that influence in his life. John the Baptist, also another one of these characters, similarly committed. It's just about a, a tradition of deep commitment to God. And that brings us to James. Now, James, uh, and, the, the, and the, the, the code word here that kind of that kind of shows us this tradition is righteous. Righteous in, in Hebrew, Zadik, Zadik, Zadikite, righteous one, righteous one. And this is what James says. Um, the prayer of a righteous one has great power in its effects. And then James makes this mention of Elijah. Elijah, the rain maker. Okay, now today, power in the world is, 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 is brokered very differently and understood very, very differently because we understand what makes stuff happen. Uh, we are living in the modern world. And in the modern world, you know what makes it rain. Okay? You, it, 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 in, in, in farming, you, you know, you, you have to have a certain basic understanding of the weather. Right? I mean, at the very least, you've got to look at the forecast so you know what are you going to do this week, right? What you can do. You know that probably later in the week it is good as early this week, right? Am I right, Tom? You, 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 you follow it, right? You know, okay? And, and, and we understand kind of the physical, physics and mechanics of what makes all that happen up there in the sky, okay? Um, same thing with the sun, you know, and, 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 and the, 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 the way things move. Now, rain in the Bible, because these are desert-dwelling people, rain is very deeply connected to the concept of living water. So the rainmaker is different today than the rainmaker was See, I could, I could stand up and I could come down and, and I could say, hey, I'm going to make it rain, right? You know, and I, I could do, you know, I come down to your farm and I could dance around and wave some stuff and do stuff, you know, and I might get it. I could hit it. It could happen, right? And, and if it did, I could take credit for it, right? And then I could say, hey, okay, I made it rain. Give me, give me, give me 500 bucks, right? <laughs> you know, but... You see, we understand the process way differently, right? So rain is not physical rain. Rain is, is, a, is a spiritual concept of living water and blessing of God. It's blessing of God. Now it looks different, doesn't it? Let's see. Okay. Let me take you back to, 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 uh, to Joshua, because this, this thing in Joshua is just phenomenal. It's a fantastic, uh, ancient, ancient scripture. And the idea of, of Joshua stopping the sun and the moon. Now, in essence, for the people in the memory of Joshua, Joshua stopped Time. Now, the lesson about spiritual power is that spiritual power comes from faith and what you believe. Anything in this world has power if you believe it has power. Okay? Uh, I mean, okay, I, I got this illness. And, and I'll tell you, I don't believe it has any power over me at all. 
They can do what it wants to do. They can do what they want to do to it. They'll make, they mess around and, you know, this and that, and chemotherapy, radiation, whatever, whatever. It has no power. Okay, it has no power. Because I choose not to believe in it. And it doesn't mean I don't believe I got it. It doesn't mean I'm not going to go to the doctor and get all the stuff done that I need to get done and go through the process. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, in terms of the conduct of daily life, it doesn't. It's not where the power is. The power is where we believe the power is. The power is in our faith. The power is in our relationship with God. Let that relationship be first. That relationship being first is that Nazorian, that, that righteous, that's what we need to do is put the relationship with God first in our lives and then we can believe the power is where the power is. Now let's look at stopping time. If a person believes really believes. Now, you, you can have an experience with someone, and I hope you have had this experience with someone where somebody is talking to you, and you're talking with them, and you're having a conversation, and that conversation connects. And in that moment, what happens to time? It stands still. It stands still. And that's what this story in Joshua is about. It's about how the, the prophet that, that was able to communicate the mission and the vision and the presence and the power of God to the people. And in that communication, time stood still. And that's what's being celebrated in that wonderful text. And then finally, Jesus and moving mountains. And, uh, you know, we, we do move mountains in a variety of ways. Um, and I've always believed and always felt that that, that, that mountain is, 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 is taken and, and moved into the sea. It just takes time a little bit, and, 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 and if you move a mountain, you know how you move a mountain, how do you move a mountain? One scoop at a time. <laughs> okay? That's how it's done, right? But we do it. And, and the mountains, uh, again, are not, you know, it's not like the Appalachian Range or the Rockies or the Sierras or the Himalayas. Uh, it, the mountain is... <laughs> the mountain is the stuff waiting for you to do when you get home. <laughs> okay? The mountain is all the obligations and tasks and so forth that have been left for you. So, Jesus says this about moving mountains. And you can consider it the same way about making the rain of living water of the blessings of God flow upon the people of God. You can say this about... Uh, managing time, you can say this about whatever it is, whatever the task is, whatever the responsibility is, whatever the obligation is, whatever we got to do out there in the world, the uh, words of Jesus are to say that uh, uh, I tell you whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Believe it. Just let the faith be the driving power. A little distance from the world of amps and bolts and foot pounds of torque and and and, and horsepower and, and calories and all those ways of measuring power, dollars or whatever we're doing to measure power in our lives. Just a little distance from that, and to understand that as we process all that stuff, the true abiding and amazing power of God is in our faith. Um, let me close this out with a word of prayer, and then I think 
time did not stand still for me this morning, and that means I'm going to have to run down the top. So let's just pray real quick together. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for this opportunity to share your word. And I ask your blessings, Heavenly Father. I ask your blessings in Jesus' precious name upon each of us as we go our separate ways until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before you switch that off, Nancy, um, the uh, if you email me, those of you who may be watching online, email me at pastorsteve969 at gmail.com, and I will email you the link to our YouTube channel, where other services and Bible studies and other online resources are shared on my YouTube channel, and you can subscribe to them. Bless you. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you folks for being here. Amen.